Church of God, Amen and Amen. Prophet Okumbo Abraham Kenneth, Graceland Prophetic Ministries, USA Branch. Now, I want to talk about something else today. Besides what I just talked about. The coronavirus. If you pay attention to what is going on in the world now. You would see that the issues with the coronavirus. Gradually disappearing. Gradually. Little by little. God is answering the prayers of his people. I was not the only one who prayed against the coronavirus. Millions of Christians were praying. Everybody on their knees crying out to God that they don't die in the year 2020. But I came to you with thus yet the Lord concerning the coronavirus. Whether you like me or not, whether you believe that God called me and sent me or not, I want you to hear me out. You are not going to die. I didn't hear you say amen. Because the things that God is angry at, little by little, it is dissolving in the spirit. And God is about to give the world another chance to blossom again. But you know how it is with man. Every time when God delivers man from a major problem, give the man two weeks, he forgets everything and goes back to his vomit. He goes back into doing the things he was doing before the coronavirus brought forth social distancing. Brought forth isolation. You know how merciful God is? The Bible says that what is man, that God is mindful of him. Not the son of man, that God visits him. Hmm. Soon after the coronavirus starts to go away, men go back to their wicked ways. They forget so soon how they had been crying to the Lord to take the coronavirus away. How they were promising the Lord to live a righteous life. How did they promise the Lord that they were going to do restitution and be obedient to the voice of God? That is man for you. That's humanity for you. We forget so soon. My prayer to God's people and for God's people is that they don't forget so soon what just happened to humanity. That every time when you look at the statistics of what has happened to humanity concerning the coronavirus or with the coronavirus, you hear that nearly 85,000 people were lost. You are still alive. Breathing. Eating and sleeping. You're not dead. You're not in the grave. You're not in a hospital. You still have yourself intact, your voice intact. Another reason why you should give God the praise. When God was showing me what was about to happen in 2012, he showed me two dimensional prophecies. I strongly believe that the first one is the coronavirus about to come to an end. Because remember, that I posted on Facebook and I told the church and God's people that before the end of May, getting into June, some things will start to open up gradually, 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 gradually. 
and then it will finally open up before the end of August. Because God is about to use the next seven years of our lives ahead of us. For those who will still be alive, God will use the next seven years to prove the people the second time. He's doing exactly what he did with the children of Israel. You know what he did with them? First, he caused a problem for them, allowed them to go through the problem. It was his will that they go into Egypt, spend captivity for more than 400 years. It was his will. He told Abraham the same thing. And then he said later on, he will come and deliver them from that captivity and punish the people who held them captive. Exactly what God is doing now. God is doing the same thing he did in the wilderness. If you have a spiritual eyes to see, you can see it. He's doing the same thing he did in the wilderness. See, at, in the wilderness, the Bible say he proved the people. He found some of them stiff-necked. Their neck stiff. What made their neck stiff? Stiff, rather. Disobedience to the voice of God. Rebellion to the voice of God. And God likened the rebellion to the sin of witchcraft in the book of 1 Samuel 15, 22. God is mysteriously mysterious. God, God, because he is a merciful God, looks from heaven and watches the affairs of man. And decide he's going to call their attention. Allow the demons that manufactured the coronavirus to be the tool that he used. As in the days what he did exactly with Pharaoh. See, let the people go that they may serve me. And the man became so stubborn. While Moses was going ahead to tell him the message, God hardens the heart of Pharaoh. The same God that sent Moses hardens the heart of Pharaoh. Mm. Very deep. Deep revelation. How God sends you on errand while you're on your way to that errand. He goes ahead of you and causes a blockade for you just to test your fate. Didn't he tell us that the heart of kings are in his hands and that he will turn it with us wherever he will? That's what he told us. Mm. And over the years, God continues to warn pastors to desist from their evil ways. False prophets, divinators, sorcerers, men who carry the microphone and say, God say, God say, God say. They know they're lying. They allow the wickedness in their heart to cause trouble for the innocents in the land. People who are innocent now bear the brunt of the wickedness that come from false pastors and false apostles. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. A warning for the church. And a warning for God's people. If you are fake, stop it now. If you are manipulating the people, stop it now. If the reason why you are in church is because you are looking for money, stop it now. Because where the church is going, this has nothing to do with me. Because me, Prophet Dukumbo Abraham Kenneth, God can take me tomorrow. Take me next year. Take me five years from now. But what I'm telling you is still going to be here. If that is what you're doing in church, stop it now. Because these are part of the reasons why the children of Israel were punished in the wilderness. They were a mixed multitude. Oh, they were a mixed multitude. 
that further explains Job chapter 1 verse 6 and Job chapter 2 verse Job 1 6 and Job 2 1 how that God said the same thing to us that every time when the sons of God came to present themselves for the Lord the Bible says Satan came among them why would Satan always come before the Lord and come before God's people always to cause confusion for the people who are real with God hmm We're entering another stage in the spirit. Christians and believers all over the world, hear me out. I know you know what God is about to do, some of you. But we're entering another stage in the realm. We're heading to the church at Acts chapter 5. It's getting more dangerous. Where the Holy Ghost by himself will slaughter people, broad daylight. Bringing back his fear among his people. In Acts 5, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Compare that to what was going on in the wilderness. How many people lost their lives? Which land did they have in the wilderness? Hey, all the lands that they had in the wilderness, all of them belong to God. Yeah, for the Lord told us in his word that as he lives, said the Lord, all souls am I. I am the Lord, the heavens are my throne, the earth my footstool. He is the greatest landlord on earth. And the greatest landlord in heaven. The God whom we serve. You want to hear something else? God is the greatest fraudster. You might not like the term fraudster. But that's who he is. Be not deceived. Scripture says God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Uh -huh. You want to defraud God? Oh, you will meet him there. He understands fraud better than you. He does. God understands fraud better than you. You are not going to escape it. No, you would not. He will bend your neck and break your head. And if he needs to replace you, he will. Everything you see belongs to him. Hmm. So I want to take this time to pray for somebody. Uh, Lord, we don't want to be castaways. We don't want to be used and dumped. We seek your face. We seek your mercy. We seek deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hmm. There was a time when people say they doubted that God was using me because they would see that you're prophesying and you're giving details of what the Lord is showing you. Don't you know you can be like that too? That you have the gift too of discernment. But your problem is that you have not yet walked on yourself with God. Your heart is not yet humble enough. Your spirit man not yet humble enough. Here the Bible tells us that who shall, he, who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord. You see he that had clean hands and a pure heart. Do you have clean hands? Do you have a pure heart? Have you been 100% honest with God? That the reason why the devil has upper hand against you, the reason why the devil has an upper hand against you is because you still have something that belongs to the devil. And because you hold what belongs to the devil, he will toss you back and forth. Was that not what happened to Elijah the Tishbite? Run away from Jezebel. The man who had power to call fire from heaven. Have you ever sat down to ask what he did to Jezebel? You think it was just because he killed the prophets of Baal? If you killed the prophets of Baal, 400 of them, why then run away from a woman? What happens to men of God when they fall from grace? Christ 
coronavirus, exposing fall from grace. All of us sinned against God. It's time to go back to him 100%. Be merciful, Lord. Against the works of your hands, O oh God. Be merciful. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring humanity, for restoring the economy of the United States, the economy of Nigeria, the economy of the world, Canada, Great Britain, Australia. Thank you. Thank you for touching our hearts to know that we are the very architects of our own problems. Look at it. 2020, halfway gone because of the wickedness of humans. God slowing down the world five months into the year. Be merciful, God. Upon the pastors of the land, be merciful. That our hearts may be turned towards you, O God. In the name of Jesus. Coronavirus is on its way out. Not yet, but on its way out. As it goes gradually, and as the world starts to go towards healing for the next seven years, don't forget the lessons we learned. May God keep his people all over the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.